we look at a map, basically what we want to do is to take something that's really complicated as in nature and to really bring it down to something that's a little bit more simplified. So that's what I'm going to do here. And you can see I've got a drone image mosaic. It's a section of Heron Reef. And I'm going to create some features that's going to simplify all this information that you see. Now, the three types of features that I'm going to create are points, lines and polygons. So what I can see in this particular here, I've got a line feature, which is this bund wall coming through here. I can see some points, which are going to be these brick items. So I'm going to put a point on each of those. And in terms of polygons, I'm going to be drawing closed shapes around some of these, these coral features and the sand and some of the deep water, etc. All right, so let's get started in creating each of those three different types of features. Now, over on the left-hand side here, you'll see it looks like a V, which is really quite handy because this is meaning add vector. So at the moment, we've got a raster in there, which is our image, and I want to create some vectors to sit over the top of that. So let's click on that and add what's going to be a new shape file layer. Now, this, this first one that I'm going to create, let's just call it bund wall. And this is going to be my line feature. So that's that big cross cutting feature that you see in the image there. Now, if you want to have additional information in your attribute table, which is the table that holds all the information about the features that you've got, you can add in extra bits and pieces here. I'm going to leave this one for the moment though, and just hit okay, because this is a really simple feature. So here's our new shapefile over here in the table of contents. And of course you can change the color of that line if you like. Now you won't see anything just yet because it's now up to us to digitize that. So what you do need to do is make sure that you've got the digitizing toolbar available to you. So these are these tools that you see across the top here. If you don't see those tools, you can right click in the toolbar area and just make sure digitizing toolbar is switched on there. So then once you've got that on, what you need to do is to come up to this little pencil and see how that says you're going to toggle editing. So that means that's going to allow me to edit that particular feature that I've got selected in the table of contents. Now, as you can see in the table of contents now, there's a little pencil next to my feature just there. So that's reminding me that that's the class that I'm going to edit. Now I'm just going to go up to this little button here, which is to add the line feature, which is what I'm doing here today. So I'm going to click on that one. So I've zoomed into where I'm going to start. I'll make one click at the beginning and you should be able to see now as I move around, there's a line extending from that particular point to my cursor. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and then come over and zoom into the area where my next vertex is going to be, which is where there's a change in direction of the bund wall. So I'm going to click there and you'll see that line now becomes solid and I'm still connected to it though because I've only clicked it once. So let's zoom out and I'm going to zoom in back to the area where I'm actually going to finish my line feature, which is just off the edge of the image just here. So I click once and then right click to, to finish that feature there. Now, as you see, that line has changed color. So it's now a light purple color, which is matching what is actually in my table of contents. Now, just to show you, if you were to say, create another line or another feature that you didn't want, say I created a line accidentally over here and there's a, there's a line that I don't want to have, there's a good way that you can delete any features that you've accidentally created. So if you right click in the table of contents and go to the attribute table. Now this is just like a spreadsheet and it holds all the information that sits behind the different features that you create within your shape files. So you can see there are two records in this attribute table and they represent the two features that we've just digitized. So if I click on the first one, you'll see that come highlighted, which is the bund wall and I'm happy with that one. Number two was the one that I accidentally created. And so I'm just gonna hit delete on my keyboard. And if I have that highlighted there, that's going to delete it just from the table as well as from the map interface there as well. 
So I've gone ahead and created a point shape file or feature for my bricks and you can see that I've digitized them in this dark red kind of colored dot there. Now I've also made the, the bund wall a, th a thicker line and a slightly different color as well so it stands out a little bit more. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is to start digitizing polygons that are going to represent the different habitats that we have visible here. So I need to go about, about it in the same way to create a new file and start to populate it. Just before I do, I just also want to make sure that I save those edits that I have created in amongst the bricks, but also the bund wall there as well. So I'm just going to click on bricks in the table of contents, and then when I toggle off the editing, it asks me to save. So I'm happy with that, and you can see that I no longer have that little pencil over here in the table of contents. So let's go ahead and create our final polygon layer. So I click on the same area here and this time it's going to be habitat. And I want to make sure that it's a polygon because I'm going to enclose shapes here. Now the biggest difference here that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a particular field. So I'm going to call this type. And so this is going to allow me to say whether or not it's live coral, dead coral, sand, rubble, rock, etc. And I'm happy with it having 80 characters, that's perfectly fine. And I just wanna make sure that I add it to the fields list so that it pops down the bottom here. So let's click OK on that. Now what you'll see differently now with this particular shape file is if we open the attribute table by right clicking there, you'll now see that it has two columns, whereas the other two features that I digitized just had that single column for ID. So we're going to start to be able to populate that type there as well. So let's find something that's really quite prominent. So perhaps this sandy patch just here. Now this is always really tricky as the more and more you zoom in, you start to see different features. But I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I've got habitat selected and I'm going to click on toggle editing here and I'm going to start a new polygon shape file here, or shape just here. So I'm going to trace around the outside here and it's going to depend on how accurate you need your data as to how many vertices you pop in as you click around your different features. So perhaps you're looking at different buildings or something like that and maybe that's even a little bit easier if you've got some straight edges. So let's right click to finish that off and the type for this one here is we're going to call this sand. All right, so you can see that that polygon has now been colored in and it's been accepted. Now let's have a look at something different along here. So perhaps we might start digitizing some of this live coral around the edge of this shape here. Now digitizing like this is fine when you've got features that are separated from each other, but what about if you have two polygons that need to be really close to each other and you don't want them to overlap or to have gaps between them either. So what we need to do is to go up to settings and go into options. And now if you go, have a look on the left hand side, there's a digitizing option here. And I want you to enable snapping by default. And so if we hit OK on this, now the next thing that you need to do is to make sure that the snapping toolbar is turned on. So you right click in the toolbar area and all the way down the bottom you can see the snapping toolbar there. So just make sure that that's ticked against that. And if you've just ticked it on, you'll see a new toolbar pop up here. And can you see the little magnet button here? So what you need to do is just to tick that on and that's going to enable the snapping. Now we can also go into the, the snapping options here down the bottom. And this is gonna give us a little bit more information about how snapping is going to occur with the individual polygons, points and lines that we've created. So here you can see that I've ticked the snapping on for habitat and I've made sure that it is under both vertex and segment there as well. Now I can change the tolerance which means how far away you need to be from that particular feature before it's going to lock itself into that feature and, and be nice and close together. But I'm happy with it just being 12 pixels for the moment. So let's run with that and see how it goes. So I'm going to go back up to my create polygon feature and zoom in nice and close to this area that I want to digitize as dead coral. So if you have a look at my cursor now, as I approach the area that I've digitized as live coral, you can see that it 
pops up with this little purple color and that's what's occurring when it snaps. So that's, that's telling me that when I get that close to it, it's automatically going to use that magnet if you like to snap on to that particular vertex or line. So I, I don't need to click exactly on the line itself, but that's where it's going to go. So I'm going to make my clicks around and say this is the area that I'd like to digitize. And you can see it that that purple dot is appearing every time I hit along the line or the vertex as well. And so I want to make sure that I do that and it's going to make my polygon sit in nice and close now to the original polygon that was there. So you can see now I've got two polygons and it doesn't matter how close how closely I zoom, they actually share a boundary. There's no overlaps and there's no gaps either. Once you've got a range of different features in there, perhaps you want to display them differently as well. So remember, you can always do that by going into the properties and perhaps we want to color those different features based on exactly what they are. So let's have a look at doing that by categories and let's do it within the type column here as well. I'm going to change it to, let's change to spectral for fun, hit on classify, there are my dead, dead categories there and again of course I can always change what those colors are but let's hit OK. Now we can start to see our map really take shape with the different colors that we're going to use to help communicate the information that we have in our data.